Welcome back. Today I thought we would talk about making videos of shopping trips. So why would I consider that to be something worth talking about? Well, a lot of you have said you would like to make YouTube videos. A lot of you have said you would like to start reselling. A lot of you have said you already resell and making a, a video you could post on YouTube showing off whatever it is you're, you're selling, your wares, so to speak, might enhance your sales opportunities. Now, I absolutely agree with that. I think that if you can take some video, fantastic. Um, so, let's talk about how to do that. Those of you who are already selling on Etsy may have noticed that Etsy allows you to upload videos now. I haven't done that yet. I certainly think I'm going to give that a try because uh, to tell you the truth, I think videoing an item is probably going to be a whole lot easier than photographing it. But we'll see. Uh, like I say, I haven't done it yet, so I can't speak authoritatively on how this works or what you would need to consider. But I am going to give it a try so that I can share it with you. For right now, we're going to talk about some of the considerations you should look at if you would like to film a shopping trip. So I suppose the first question that comes to to someone's mind when you say film a shopping trip is well with what well this really is all you need to get started now is this going to give you the best quality video no of course not it's a phone it's uh, the fact that it is also a video camera is secondary to the fact that it is a phone uh, my phone in particular is not an expensive phone. It's just your basic phone. Um, it, it does what I need it to do. But in a pinch, I can and have filmed using this phone. Uh, when I went to Michael's to get the mat for that beautiful uh, picture, that Kylie Seacrest did of the schoolhouse. And by the way, his information on his Etsy shop, uh, I keep that in the video notes on my videos. So if you haven't checked out his Etsy shop, please do. Uh, just, I have to tell you, I just love looking at those gorgeous pictures of those gorgeous old houses. So check that out. Okay, digression over that happened to me I, I act like it's somebody else's fault because even though I knew I was going to go to Michael's that day and look for a mat it didn't occur to me to take a camera along no idea why um, it's probably because I'm getting old and senile hey you know it happens to all of us I have my phone with me and I did film the mat selection process, getting the mat, and it was fine. Um, I filmed at Lutz with my phone when my camera battery died. Um, Lutz Antiques, uh, they're kind people. They very graciously allowed me to recharge it and even had the recharger, bless their hearts. So, you know, nevertheless, plenty of film on my phone. Is it a perfect situation? No. 
My phone, I can't speak to anyone else's phone, my phone does not give off enough light to film well in dark locations. The places I go to are generally antique shops as opposed to, you know, large thrift bazaars. Uh, antique shops, just by their very nature, tend to be a little more dark and dim than other stores with big fluorescent lighting and so on. Is this ideal? No. Will it work? Absolutely, I have done it. Um, no question about that. Yes. And it means that you could film this afternoon. You don't need to invest in any more special equipment. In general, however, I would suggest that if you want to use your phone as your camera, you might want to get a few little camera accessories for your phone. Um, for example, a little tripod or a stand. Camera uh, phone stands um, intended to, to be used with your camera when you're filming. Phone stands can be had on eBay for under $10. They even have little tripods with a little halo light that you can just park there and do your little selfie thing. Uh, those are under $30. So, not expensive you know, if you want to enhance the quality of your filming with your phone. Um, next up is... This is my digital camera. I have had this thing for, oh, I want to say 20 years. It's probably been close to 20 years, if not 20, at least 15. I have videoed on this. Uh, it's not really, because it's an old camera, and it's, it's a digital camera designed primarily for still photos. It's not, um, it's not what I would consider ideal, but will it work? Absolutely. And if you've watched my videos, you've seen things filmed on this camera. Um, this is the one I use most often. This is a Nikon Coolpix. That's what it says on the front. Uh, it's a Nikon camera. It's a good name. Uh, I added my little uh, tripod, little flexible thing that I can, you know, balance my camera on anything. I don't have to hold it. Uh, I, I don't recall how much I spent for the little tripod thing. Uh, probably less than $20. The camera itself I got at Walmart for $30. So... Can you do it inexpensively? Yes. Uh, this shoots HD film. Uh, the film is um, very uh, memory intensive. When I shoot with this, um, if I were to film for, say, half an hour with this, I'm sure I would be looking at 30 or 40 gigabytes. That's something to consider. When I have been out filming, and I do it in little short bursts, two minutes here, three minutes there, and I download the film, um, I'm usually looking at at least 20 gigabytes. That means you have to have a computer that can handle a 20 gigabyte download. Um, so, is this for everybody? No. No, it's the memory intensive. Nevertheless, um, it's, it's high definition film, very good. So that just gives you a quick overview of the equipment that I'm using. Um, do I think you need to go off and get a fancy camera and a fancy truck? No. 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 Um, as I say, I filmed on my cell phone. 
I will do it again. I will find myself somewhere when uh, I don't have a camera with me and I want to film. Um, I did this at Michael's a couple weeks ago and I will be showing you the film I took on my camera at Michael's at Halloween because it was all Halloween themed stuff. I'm saving that footage for a Halloween special. I'll do it again too. I will find myself somewhere where there's something I want to share with you and I don't have a camera with me. So equipment, no. Frankly, you've got all the equipment you need. When you want to film a shopping trip in particular, you're going into uh, a private business that is open to the public. Now, um, there's a difference between a, a private business open to the public and the public in general. I can go out on the street. I can film anything I want to. Um, oh, by the way, filming is not the issue. It's playing it back. That's the issue. It's airing it for publication. But I can film what I want to. I can go around, walk up and down the street. I can film my neighbor's houses if I'm not trespassing or I'm not doing anything inappropriate like using a zoom lens to peek through their bathroom windows, this is something I can do. You know, I'm, I'm out in public. Anything else that is out in public with me, uh, there is no presumption of privacy. When you go into a private business, it's a little different. You should get their permission. It's not difficult to get people's permission. I find that not only are people willing to give me their permission to film, they will help me. They are pleased uh, to have me film in their store because it's going on YouTube. Other people are going to see this. People may show up. They may want to buy something. You know, hey, publicity. These people are in business. So, do people say no? No. I've never had anyone say no. Um, occasionally, I've, I've had people wondering what, uh, what it is I'm doing this for. If I just ask, you know, may I film? Um, you know, you need to go a little further than that. You need to let them know you're filming this for your YouTube channel, by the way, even if you don't have a YouTube channel, it's perfectly acceptable to say to someone, I am filming this for my YouTube channel. Now, you're probably going to say, good heavens, Sue, you're encouraging us to lie. Yeah. Okay. Guilty. The thing is, if you tell somebody you are filming for your YouTube channel, what you, it's shorthand for, I am filming something that I intend to make available to the general public that I will be using. I may profit from this, you know, and so, yes, it's a lie, but it's shorthand for what's going on. And hopefully if we, if we follow through, it won't be a lie because you will have a YouTube channel and that film will be going on your YouTube channel. And it's so much easier than saying to someone, well, I'm filming and maybe I'll have a YouTube channel. And, you know, by the time you're done, they're probably going to say, I'm not sure I want them filming in my store. They don't know what they're doing. So make sure they know because what you're filming is going to be available to the general public. Now, if you're filming in someone's store, we're presuming you've gotten their permission, you can film everything in the store thing. Keep that in mind. If it's available to the general public, you can't go into their back office and open their files and start snapping pictures. But can you film their restroom? Yeah. They said you could film in their store. The restroom is in their store. Can you film the register where they're checking you out? Yes. Yes. What you can't do without permission is you can't film their staff. You need permission. May I film you? 
ordinarily, if they've let you film in the store, they're okay about you filming the staff. Um, you can't film the rest of their customers without getting permission from the individual customer. If you're going to do that, film the permission. Just make sure that camera is rolling when you say, may I have your permission to film? They say, no, turn the camera off. That's it, dump the film. But, you know, they say yes, then you have documentation that you have their permission that you can edit that out of your final product but you don't want to find yourself with a video that hopefully will go viral nine million people will see it and the person you were filming somehow gets the idea that you're making billions of dollars and they want their cut you have permission to film you know just be smart um, that's not legal advice, by the way, because I'm not a lawyer. If they have children, do not film their children. You don't, you're not going to get permission. You're not going to do it. You know, just leave the kids out of the mix. That's bad business. If they have pets, by the way, most of the antique stores, thrift stores, etc. that I've ever been in have welcomed pets. Um, from the standpoint of, of a business owner, I'm not sure how smart that decision is. But as an animal lover, I really enjoy when somebody is, you know, scooting the little poodle around in the stroller. Um, you can certainly get their permission to film their pets. If you have that opportunity, I would say, yes, people love animals. That will enhance your video to have a cute little puppy, you know, wagging its cute little tail at you. So permission. When you start to consider what it is you want to film on your shopping trip, keep in mind there are many ways to do this. You can film yourself shopping. Um, uh, that is when you hold the camera up. There's a, oh look, oh I'm sorry I got it out of the, here we go. There. Now we're all in the the film. All right, here is me shopping and you're filming yourself shopping. You can do what I do. I film the items I am shopping, uh, shopping for. I bring them up to the register. I'll lay them out. I'll film them some more there. Um, you know, that works for me. Everybody has their own style of doing this. My style is not better than yours. It's not better than somebody else's. Um, many people's style is much better than mine because, as you know, mine is not a mega channel. Uh, there are YouTube channels out there with a gazillion subscribers, you know. So, objectively speaking, they probably got a better handle on this than I do. But, your, your style will be your own. I film um, in part because it's instructional. This is what I picked up. This is why. This is what it is. Um, other people will say, um, will film and say, look, this is, you know, a piece I picked up for $3. It's worth $96 or whatever. That's not something. I get into because that's not that's not the focus of what I'm doing. Mine, mine is an educational focus. I guess that's the bottom line. You know, once a teacher, always a teacher. Uh, what I do is I um, go out, find something of interest. Even if I'm not going to buy it, I take that opportunity to show you so you can identify it, so you know what it is. Sometimes it's a terrible deal. And I'll look at something and say, look at this. This is a full retail, uh, so I'm not going to buy it. Or this is a piece, uh, and I've done that a couple of times. It's like, this is a piece that is not vintage. It's not an antique. It's not worth what they're asking. Um, because that is 
what my channel is about is is the education your channel is probably going to be about something else you're probably going to have your own slant on this and you may in fact have some sort of specialty item that you shop for you may want to just bring all your stuff out in the car and sit in the back seat and film them nothing at all wrong with that the key is to start filming because that film is going to be the nucleus of your video um, as, as you know, because you've seen my shopping videos, I, I assume, unless you're new to the channel, in which case, welcome. What I do is I take my film footage, then I make a video like this, a video in which I am talking to you. I insert the footage of the item I'm talking about so that I have the opportunity to discuss the, uh, the piece twice once on the fly in the store, and once later when I'm putting the video together. That's the way I do it. Now, one of the things that we should mention is that Etsy is now encouraging sellers to use videos in their sales. I haven't done that yet. Uh, I should because almost everything that goes into my Etsy shop has been filmed when I purchased it so I've already got film footage of the item might as well once I do that I will be able to let you know what the ins and outs are of this but that's something that is open to you as well as a seller as a vehicle for showing off your items in other words doesn't have to be a video for YouTube. You might want to include the video of purchasing the item. Um, you might not. I do because um, I would say more than 90% of the items in my Etsy shop are selling for less than $20. And that's, again, 90%. That includes shipping. So I'm not afraid to say, I bought this for $4, I put a $15 price tag on it, I'm shipping it out to you for free. Because uh, I'm not, well, I'm not price gouging, frankly. Not that there's anything wrong with charging fair retail value for your items. I'm not trying to say that at all. It's just that my focus is completely different. I go out grab the deals, and then I want to pass it off to you at what I consider to be a fair price, not something, you know, if you have to sell an item you bought from me, I don't want you to say, I took a loss on it. Let me put it that way. I want to price it so that at the very least, you throw it on Etsy, you throw it on eBay, you're going to break even. You know, that it's not going to be something where you will walk away saying, you know, I can't believe how much she charged me for this thing and she only paid $4 for it. But, again, as I say, that's me. That's the focus of my videos. My videos are focused on education, helping you identify the items. Yours may be different. So, you got your equipment, which is probably, to begin with, just this, and that's okay. You got permission from the shops in which you are filming. And as I say, they're, they're happy for it. I've, I've never had anyone look at me and say, no, you can't film here. Never. Ordinarily, they're delighted. It's free publicity for them. Uh, you, you have permission to photograph any humans or pets that you are photographing. You are not photographing children. As I say, that's bad business. Stay away from it for reasons that I'm sure I do not need to go into with you. 
And now we're looking at uh, the focus. So for me, this was easy. As I say, once a teacher, always a teacher. You give me a camera, I'm going to start talking about what it is I'm filming. There are many, many different approaches you can take if you want to film your shopping trip. Um, you can film multiple stores that have the same type of items. In other words, you could put together a video saying, I, I shopped for teacups at nine different stores. Take a look at what I found in each of them. It's fine. You can say, I am shopping to fill my Etsy shop. Great. You can say, I need a new duvet for the bed, and we're going down to Macy's, and we're going to start filming. Great. By the way, I'm not sure Macy's would say yes. Uh, when I say no one's ever refused, I've never asked Macy's. There are some kinds of stores where it's not likely they will allow you to video only because of issues like the privacy of their other customers. That's usually why they would decline. But the point is, if Macy's will let you, you can do the duvet shopping. You can film your grocery shopping if that's what you think the viewers of your channel are going to be interested in. Once you've got your film, you've got two options. You just edit your film however you want to edit it. And quite frankly, there are people who can uh, film. I've seen it done. People who can film with their cell phone, and they are simply so skillful at filming what they want to show and only what they want to show, that a whole video can just go from one clip to the next, to the next, to the next, with virtually no editing. Bless their hearts, I am not one of them. Um, I need to pull out, you know, the pieces that I need to pull out. Uh, for example, I walk around and I'll have my camera and then I will. And I haven't turned it off. And suddenly, you know, you're getting a picture outside the window of the ceiling, whatever. And I have to eliminate that from the clip that I am showing you. Once you have figured out what it is you want to show, and this is your editing process, then all you have to do is figure out how you're going to put it together. Are you going to sit in front of a camera, as I do, and talk people through the process? Or are you just going to go from one clip to another? That's mostly how Jocelyn does it. And my goodness, her channel is like five or six times the size of mine, so hey, you know, good heavens, she's doing something right. So a lot of people do it that way. That's just their style. And then once you figured out what your style is, you just string that together and that's your video. Now, sounds simple, right? It is. The truth is, I'm not oversimplifying this. It really is that simple, at least the parts that we are talking about. So, if you are interested, do, do not walk into the camera. No, no, all right. Yeah, he's going to. Yeah, all right, okay. He walked past without banging it. Um, all right, all right, come on. Okay, come on. All right. Well, he was feeling forlorn and neglected, so he's up here with us. Say hi. Um, if you are interested in the rest of it, where to come up with an intro, how to come up with an intro, um, what you would like to do 
in terms of uh, branding your video for YouTube or for Etsy or whatever else. Um, let me know in the comments because we can take this as far as you would like. The goal today was simply explain the basics of how to video a shopping trip and what you would like to consider when you do it. So let me know because frankly I would like nothing more than to see all 33,000 of you start your own YouTube channels. Believe me, I don't view it as competition. I view it as new stuff to watch on YouTube. All right, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit you down. Yes. Okay. Have a great day. Audie made his appearance, which he hasn't done for the last few days. So he's happy. I'm happy. I will see you all tomorrow. And let's just have our little minute of serenity before we have to face the cold, cruel world again.